Welcome to EZLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on rates of reaction and reversible reactions. And we have been discussing on the factors affecting the rates of reaction. So for today we are going to look at temperature. How does temperature affect the rate of reaction? And then we are going to do a practice. So an increase in temperature increases a rate of a chemical reaction. So the reason why it does so is because increase in temperature usually increases the kinetic energy of reactants. So if the particles are able to move faster, it means they are going to have more frequent collisions and more frequent successful collisions because you want successful collision for a reaction to occur. So the rate of reaction therefore increases. An example is a reaction of sodium thiosulfate with the diluted hydrochloric acid. So you are going to see this reaction, especially when we do our practicals in paper three, you can be told to calculate the rate for the action of sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid. So our X is usually drawn on the beaker and then sodium thiosulfate is reacted with hydrochloric acid at different concentrations or at different temperatures. So you'll still find it also in regards to uh, concentration against time as well. So sodium thiosulfate reacts with hydrochloric acid to form sodium chloride, water, and sulfur, and sulfur four oxide is, give, is formed. So you see the X that you are creating on the bottom of the beaker, maybe in a paper, and then you place on top, you're going to calculate the time it takes for it to completely disappear, depending on the temperature, as the temperature increases. This is because of the formation of the sulfur, which is a, a yellow solid. A yellow solid. So the ionic equation is the sul the thiosulfate ions reacting with hydrogen ions to form sulfur, sulfur four oxide, and water. So time taken to precipitate the same amount of sulfur by the same volume of acid at different different temperatures is measured. Concentration of the sulfate solution and the acid is kept constant. So in the case where we are looking at the factor concentration, so the same experiment can be used, but now with a change of the concentration. So depending on what you are given in the exam, ether can come. But in this experiment, it was now change of temperature that was happening. So this is how the curve should look like. You can see the temperature and the time. So the rate is proportional to 1 over T, and the higher the temperature, the shorter the time for completion of the reaction, uh, and the higher the rate of reaction. If you see the second, uh, the second uh, graph, it's still going to form a curve, and you can see we can uh, join the curves. It's going to be uh, like this. So alternatively, you can plot 1 over T against temperature, as you can see I have done. So this is a sample question uh, in regards to what we are discussing. So we are going to go through the procedure because you can you will see this procedure often in your paper three questions, and then you're going to plot the graph together. So the reaction of sodium thiosulfate to dilute or chloric acid. So you measure 20 centimeters cubed of 0.05 molar sodium thiosulfate. You've already been given you already been given this solution into a 50 centimeters cubed glass beaker. And then you place the beaker on a white tile or filter paper with an ink max X on it. Determine that and record its temperature as soon as the temperature uh, you have you have read the room temperature in the table. Then measure 20 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid 0.1 molar using the fifth using a 50 centimeters cubed measuring cylinder and you put the acid into the beaker containing sodium thiosulfate. And then you start the stopwatch. So you determine the time taken for the marks of X to become invisible, obscured when viewed from above. So you measure again uh, another portion of the thiosulfate and you heat the solution. So you are repeating the procedure now, but in different temperatures. So we have room temperature. You can uh, use 25 degrees Celsius as our room temperature. And now after that, you keep on repeating the same experiment with different temperatures. So you are required to draw out, to plot a curve of temperature against one over T. So let's do that. So this is what we are going to use as our graph paper. It might be a little bit small uh, size, but follow through and then also work it out in your books. So the, the thing is we are, uh, we are plotting the time, it was temperature against time. So our temperature will be on the bottom of time. 
and it is 1 over t and then our temperature will be on the side this will be our temperature So let's determine the scale. So you notice on the temperature we have beginning at 25 degrees Celsius to 60. So we can decide to use, uh, let's see if we can use 10 degrees. So if you have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, that will at least cover half of the, of the graph paper or we can decide to start at the center here. So we can start 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, or we can also do 5 degrees, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. We can choose to do that as well. As for the uh, x-axis, it's 1 over t, so we know the highest value is 0 0.1, the lowest is 0 0.02, so we can start with at 0, And we can have 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.1. So you can have that. So we can have 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08, then 0 0.09, and 0 0.1. And then um, on the y-axis, we said we have uh, 5, uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, uh, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and 60. So at least our graph can cover most of the of the graph paper. So this will be of course our zero. So you start with a with a temperature of zero time of 0 0.02, so here and time of 25 degrees Celsius. So the first point will be here. And then next will be 0 0.025. So we need to do a little bit of math. So we have 10 squares of between 0 0.001. So it means one small square is 0 0.001. So for us to get 0 0.025, it's going to be, if you multiply this by 5, you get 0 0.005. If you add this to 0, uh, 0 0.002 plus 0 0.02 that is uh, plus 0 0.005 you get 0 0.025 so it means it's in between 0 0.02 and 0 0.003 so it's here so it is 0 0.025 at um, 30 degrees celsius so here and then we have 0 0.05 which is here it goes up to 40 degrees Celsius, so here. And then we have 0 0.0067. So this is the same as if we put it in two decimal places, it's going to be 0 0.067. So it's 0 0.06. Uh, so this is 0 0.06, so this is going to be 6.5. We need 6, um, 6, 7. So it's going to be this line here. So we are going to go with this line up to 50, uh, 50 degrees Celsius. Up to 50. This second line up to here. So it's going to be here. And then the last one is at 0 0.1 and 60 degrees Celsius, which is going to be here. So you can see we have formed a, a, a sort of like a curve or a straight line. So after that, we join our points. So let's join the points together. 
So yours should be a bit uh, more neat. So that will be our curve. So you see what we have done. So you can be asked different questions in regards to the curve that we have drawn, but that's how you do the curve. You can be told also to draw uh, temperature against uh, time, not of one over time. So you can also you can also do that. Uh, so that brings us to the end of uh, this uh, factor. So see you in the next lesson as we discuss another factor that affects the rates of reaction.